So some of the options I have for my labels are I can determine if whether it's shown or hidden. So like, for example, starred. I, I really don't want that one. I don't use that label at all, so I just mark it as hide. Same thing with important. Same thing with chats. Uh, sent mail. I always want that one shown. So the difference between Google Mail and first class is first class in your mailbox, all your emails that you sent as well as received are all in your mailbox. Google Mail doesn't do that. The only thing that's in your inbox is email messages that you received. So any email messages that you send out will go into your sent mail uh, label, we'll call it. Okay. So I always want that sent mail one shown so that I can go and see those messages that I've sent. Okay. And then you can take a look at, there's a variety of other labels here um, that I've you know set, made settings for. So down at the bottom are all the labels that I've created. And you can see it. most of them I have uh, selected as show if unread. And then I have... Uh, the Met webinars one, which is the one we just created, I have that one to show. Uh, if you have hide, it's always going to be hidden, and the only way you can see it is by clicking on the more labels part to see that label. So it doesn't get all congested on the left-hand side here if you don't want. Okay. So those are all the different uh, label settings. You can also you know remove that label or edit that label and those kinds of things with these settings as well. Okay. So that kind of leads into my uh, filters, okay, uh, and the filters are kind of associated with the labels. Now, if you, you remember how in first class, anytime something sent to Division News, to read that message in Division News, we have to go into the Division News folder. Well, with Google, we're still going to have a Division News, but unless you set up a filter or set up some labels, that Division News is always to automatically going to show up in your inbox. So if you go to your inbox, you're going to have the division news in there as well as any other messages that people have sent you. So we're going to look at creating a filter which will automatically move those division news messages to a label called division news. Okay, so that they don't actually appear in your inbox. They're going to appear in that label called division news so that they don't kind of get make your inbox all congested and things like that. And you can do this with any messages as well, but the division news is what we're going to focus on right now. So what we want to do to create a filter is click on the arrow next to settings and then go to settings. And then if we go to filters, and at the bottom there's a link, or you might not have, these are all the filters I've created, you might not have these there. But you click on the create a new filter link. Now this is where it gets a little tricky. Okay, because Division News is a Google group, we don't want to put Division News in the From field. We're going to put it in the To field because how groups work is any time a message is sent to that group, for example, Division News, it then sends out, that group will send out an email to all its members. So Division News, everybody in Red Deer Catholic is a part of Division News. So any time a message is sent to Division News, it will then send a copy of that message to everybody in the division. So to set up a filter for division news, in the to field, we're going to just start typing division. And you'll notice that there's a division news at rdcrs.ca that comes up. So we want to select that division news. And you'll notice it fills it out, division.news at rdcrs.ca. And if that didn't pop up for you, then all you have to do is just type in division.news at rdcrs.ca. Then we click create filter with this search. Now, first thing we want to do is I don't want the division news showing up in my inbox. I want it to show up in my division news label. So I'm going to click on the box that says skip the inbox archive it option. So what that says is, or what that does then is it's saying that any time I receive a message for division news, it's not going to put it in my inbox. It's just going to put it somewhere else. And in this case, I'm going to put it in a label. This is kind of like a folder. So I'm going to click on the box that says apply the label, and then I'm going to click on the box that says choose label. Now, I've already got a division news label created, but you can just as easily click create new label, call it division news, and then it'll create that division news label for you. Okay, so I'm just going to click apply label, and I'm going to choose division news. Now there's one more thing. At the bottom, there's a box that says also apply filter to 13 matching conversations. So what it's saying is that there's 13 messages that uh, meet or match those criteria that I've established for that filter. So 
is basically what if I, by checking that, I'm saying, okay, those 13 messages that I have that match this criteria for Division News, I want those moved to that label. I want this filter to apply to them as well. Okay, so I click on that box, and then I click on Create Filter. Okay. Now, if I go to my inbox, and then I'm going to click on More Labels, so if I go to Division News now, any messages I receive for Division News are no longer going to appear in my inbox. They're only going to appear in Division News. And so these are all the Division News messages that I've received so far. Okay. Now, you can also choose how you want to view that Division News. So one, I have it shown, show, sorry, only show if unread. So the only way it's going to show up top here is if I get an unread message in my division news. Or if you click show, it's always going to appear on the top here. Okay, or if you click hide, the only way I'll be able to see it is by clicking on more labels, and then it'll be down at the bottom here. Okay, but for me, I like show if unread, so anytime a message is sent to that, label or sent to Division News, it's going to pop up up top here. It's going to be bolded like my inbox and drafts are, and it's going to have a number next to it as showing me how many messages I have unread in that filter, okay, or in that label, okay. And it's easy to create other filters. All you do is simply go back to your settings, go into filters, create a new filter, and then let's say, okay, I want to filter uh, any messages that I receive from uh, Paul Mason. Okay, so I put him in there. Okay, so that's the from field. So any messages I receive from Paul Mason, I'm going to click create filter with this search. And I want to apply a label, choose label, and I can choose whatever label I want to associate with that message. Okay, so that's label, or sorry, that's filters. Uh, the next thing I want to look at is settings. So in Google Mail, we have settings. So uh, one of the things is if you click on the inbox tab at the top, uh, for the inbox type, I like to choose unread first, okay? And the reason why I want unread first is because when I go to my inbox, I want all my unread messages to show up at the top, okay? And anything I've read just basically goes down below, okay? So I'm going to go back to my settings. So inbox, and that's just a personal preference of mine. So you have some other options, important first, so anything it recognizes as important or you've labeled as important will appear first and so forth and so on, okay? The other thing I want to take a look at is in our settings, there's a lab or a, an add-on, I guess, that'll let you do a 30-second undo send. And what that is is 30 seconds after you send that email, you'll be able to unsend it if you wish. So if you click on the labs link at the top, and then you want to scroll down until you find the one that says undo send. Okay, yours would probably be near the bottom somewhere in the lab section here, but if you want to go down and take a look for that one that says undo send, and it'll look like this right here, just says undo send, and then to the right of that says enable, and it'll say disable. You want to click on the little button that says enable, so that it's enabled. Okay, so make sure you click Enable, and then you want to scroll down to the very bottom, and you want to click on Save Changes. Okay, and after you've clicked on Save Changes, you'll be back in your inbox. So what we need to do is one more thing. We're going to go back into our settings. We're going to go to our labs. Oh, no, sorry, we're going to be in our general section, my mistake. And in your general section, you'll see there's a little thing that says undo send or a little area that says undo send and it'll have this enable undo send and that box should be checked if it's not check it off and then it says send cancellation period and I set mine up to 30 seconds so yours will probably be defaulted right now to 5 or 10 I'm going to set mine to 30 seconds okay and then again you want to scroll down to the bottom you want to click on save changes and how this works, this undo send is, so now if I compose a message, and let's say I send it to Denise Coffin, okay, now when I click send, you're going to see a yellow box appear at the top of your screen, and it says your message has been set, and it's got a choice to either undo or view message. Now I have 30 seconds to click on undo, and when I click on undo, it's basically retrieve that message and it's put it in a draft form so now I can either modify that message and resend it 
I can just close it. So it's going to just be a draft now if I want. Then I can go back in and I can modify it later or I can just delete the message. Okay. So that's how the undo send works. Okay. Next, there's an IMAP setting. So if we go back into our settings, okay, and we go to the forwarding and pop IMAP section. Now, the IMAP you want to make sure is enabled. Now the reason for this is if you're accessing your Google Mail on your phone or iPad or something like that, you want to be able to, when you read a message on your iPad or iPhone, when you go back into your Google account on your computer, you want it to show up as unread. So you don't have to go and read through all those messages or mark them as read on the computer as well. By enabling IMAP, that's going to ensure that every time you read a message on the computer, it's going to show up as read on your iPhone or on your iPad or other device. And same thing, anytime you read that message on your iPad or iPhone, it's going to show up as read on your device, or sorry, on your computer. Okay. All right. And then you'll, sorry, you want to make sure you click on save changes after you do that as well. Okay. Now the other thing is, in your um, Google Mail, when you compose a message, there actually is a spell checker that you can access. So I've got my new message window up here, and in the bottom right-hand corner, I can click on that little drop-down arrow, and there's a check spelling feature. Okay, so I can click on that check spelling feature, and that's going to do a spell check for me on for my message. Okay, the other way to have a spell check done for your Google Mail is if you're in Google Chrome, it's automatically with Google Chrome has a spell checker bit built in. So anytime I'm typing something in Google Chrome, it's going to tell me if I'm typing it incorrectly. So, for example, if I start typing a word, hit space, you're going to see it's just like Microsoft Word. It's going to have that red squiggly line underneath saying, okay, don't, I don't recognize this word. I can right-click on that word and choose what the correct word is. Okay. So there's a couple ways you can do the spell check, just to review. Click on the drop-down arrow in the bottom right corner, choose check spelling. Or if you're using Google Chrome, all you have to do is start typing, and then you get that little red squiggly line, and you can just right-click and choose the correct word. Okay. Next, I want to look at themes. So right now, my Google Mail probably looks very similar to yours unless you've done something with your themes. So if you go to your settings, and then settings again, there is a themes link at the very top. So you go to that tab. So these are all the different themes that you can set for your Google Mail. So myself, I kind of like the dusk, so I click on the dusk. Just to give my uh, uh, outside edge a little bit darker background, it's just easier on my eyes. But there's a variety of other themes that you can choose um, for your Google Mail. I sometimes like to avoid the, the images, just because they kind of make it kind of messy around the outside. Oh. Oh, there we go. So you can see it sometimes get difficult to read or see what's on the screen around the outside when you have an image there. So for my themes, I like to just go with a solid color. That's just a personal preference of mine. Okay, and you don't even have to click Save Changes afterwards. After you select a theme, uh, you're good. If you want to go back to the original theme, that's just this light one, that very first one there. You just click on that. Okay. Lastly, I want to take a look at signature lines. So you can add a signature line so that any time you send a message it's going to have a signature line at the bottom. So for example, if I go to my sent mail and I'm going to take a look at uh, this one here. Okay, You can see that it's added the signature line at the bottom of my email. And by adding a signature line, what you're basically telling Google Mail is add this at the bottom of all my messages. Okay, So if we go to our settings, and then we want to be in the general tab. And then you want to scroll down until you get to the signature section. Now, you want to click on the button next to this big text box here. And then you basically type in whatever you want for your signature. Okay. Now, one of the other options I like to do as well is click on the box that says insert the signature before quoted text and replies and remove the dot dot line that precedes it. So what this does is anytime you're replying to a message, it's going to put your signature above the quoted text, okay, instead of after the quoted text. Okay, then you just click on Save Changes, and then basically you've added a signature line. Now just keep in mind that when you compose a message, sometimes, or actually let me go into a message, 
when I click reply here, you'll notice that my signature line is not appearing, but I've got these three little dot dot dots here. If I click on those three dot dot dots, now I see that, okay, the quoted message as well as my signature line are appearing. Okay, So your signature line, as you're typing a message in Google Mail, won't always appear when you start typing that message. Okay, And that concludes what I was going to go over today. So if you have any questions, uh, for some reason my questions window here is not appearing anymore. Uh, if you have any questions, just type them into the chat box here and I'll answer them as best I can. Uh, and like I said, for some reason, I'm not sure why, the uh, questions little box where I can't see your questions right now. So yeah, if you have any questions, just type them into the chat window here on the right-hand side, and I'll do the best I can to answer them. Otherwise, uh, have a good evening, and, uh, and enjoy Googling. <laughs>